You're watching IT Pro TV. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cool Features in Windows 10, where we take a look at some of the cool new features coming out and share them with you and give us a, we give a little rating at the end, let you know what we think. So uh, without any further ado, I am going to turn it over to the man with the plan, Mr. Adam Gordon. I'm the man with the funny Google eyes. So we thought it would be cool, Mike and I, and if this works out, it was definitely me. If it doesn't, well, we, we know whose fault it was. <laughs> we thought it would be cool uh, to show you how to install not a new feature, not an extension, not a cool tip or trick around Windows 10. We've done a lot of those, and hopefully you're finding value in all those episodes. We thought it'd be cool to show you something that really Microsoft has spent a lot of time on in the last year or so. We're in the beginning of 2020 as we're filming this particular little vignette, and the new Edge Chromium browser is finally ready for prime time. Well, we okay. think it is. We we're not just, quite sure. We should just stop right there and think about what you just said. Microsoft's Edge Chromium, Chromium Browser. What? That's the seventh sign right there. <laughs> End of the world as we know it is about to occur. Right. So <clears throat> before the vortex finally swallows all of us up for good, uh, Microsoft has invested a lot of time, if you are aware, in um, changing how they relate to other businesses, other technologies, with the change in leadership that's occurred over the last several years. We <laughs> are happy about that. Let's just we put are. it that way. Yes. Uh, and in the brave new world that... Um, Microsoft has now envisioned. Not only is open source, not only is Linux, not only are other um, vendors more welcome and partnering and seen as being value added partners, but they actually are learning how to play nicely with each other, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. And so many, many things have happened as a result of that. One of the ones we thought was cool around Windows 10 was the ability to be able to use the Edge Chromium browser. Now, I know Mike has mm -hmm. been using it in various beta versions for a while. Yep. Brave man that he is in his production <laughs> machine. I said, ah, no, I'm, I'm already doing the fast ring Windows Insider for the OS. I'm uh, not touching the browser on my production machine. I figured it couldn't be any worse than IE, so why not? Oh, that's a rookie mistake <laughs> if I ever heard one. But I have been running it myself, uh, but I'll go you one better. I've been running on my Windows 7 machine. Uh, so I figured if I was going to go uh, and really garbage things up, well, I should do it you know, in you the go. oldest operating system <laughs> in existence that might still allow it to run. So I've been running it for a while as well, and I've been real happy with it. I, you know, We haven't really chatted that much about it, but I, I've been pretty excited about it. I think it's been a pretty cool experience overall. I mean, performance has been really good with it. Yeah, you know, it it's been has quick, been. responsive, and what more do you want out of your browser? Yeah. Yeah. Other than the 15 processes that it seems to launch, which you know, I could think we of expected because when they went to when Chrome did that already, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's, it's got all the the things we would think of that we would want. So mm -hmm. that part's been good. Uh, and now that it's been officially released, uh, actually just a couple of days prior to us filming this episode, it's uh, earlier this week uh, that it actually was officially announced. And there's a funny story around that Mike will share with us, <laughs> depending on how this installation goes, because we may still see the issue that uh, was uh, happening the first day or so of the release. So join me here. What we thought we would do is show you how to download and install the Chromium browser. Now, I'm, because I am cautious by mm -hmm. nature, uh, you may notice a little blue bar at the top of the screen. Uh, I am doing this in a VM as opposed to on my production machine because although it's ready for prime time, uh, it may not be ready for the Windows Insider wheel that I'm on with mm -hmm. Windows OS is changing every week. And all kidding aside, it's one of the things I've been talking about with Mike about this is I'm not convinced I can put this in uh, because I'm installing a new OS at least once a week, maybe twice a week. And I'm a little concerned about some of the, mm -hmm. the issues associated with that. So I'm still doing a little testing to figure that piece out. So I thought it would be safe and okay to put this into a stable VM. And that's what we're going to do, running Windows 10. Uh, and I'm going to give Mike the option here. I do have the download page available and ready in the existing Edge browser. But I thought it would also be good if perhaps we installed the Chromium browser from Chrome. Ooh, so I, I like do that. have two browser options available. <laughs> We're going to blindfold Mike, spin him three times in each right. direction, and then let him play pin the tail on the browser for download. So which browser do you want me to use to download this? You know, I would like to see you do it in Chrome. I've done it myself yeah. in Edge, so let's see how Chrome right, I'm just going to close. I'm just going to close Edge just okay. so we get rid of that. We have Chrome open, and just so there is no mistake in things, right, uh, we are, as you can hopefully see here, right, mm -hmm. we are definitely over here uh, in Chrome, you can kind of tell down at the bottom here, 
where it says about Google Chrome, right? Mm -hmm. So I just actually downloaded Chrome and installed the latest build right before we started the episode. So it's the latest build of Chrome, whatever that would be in the middle of January of 2020. So one thing I just want to point out to you real quick, if you do need alternate operating system support here, including at least right now, back to Windows 7, which is funny because, again, it is end of life uh, right. in terms of support, although there is extended support still available for Windows 7. It is available. You can see Windows 7, 8, 8, 1, as well as Mac OS, iOS, and Android options are available. Just have to download with the little arrow there to get them, so just be aware of that. We're going to click download here. We get our Edge terms. Now, I'm uh, looking. That looks a lot like English to me. We don't need um, our, our translate extension for this we one, We don't, do we? but we also did not have the issue uh, that you ran into. Perhaps you want to regale our, uh, yeah, our followers was, with this crazy story. This was yesterday, this right? Was. It just announced that we could download it, so I followed a link off a gentleman's blog. Uh, click the same button that he just did, and that window that you're looking at now on his screen was in Chinese, which I thought was interesting. I thought, well, maybe it's just this dialog box that's having an issue detecting my language or something. So I went ahead and downloaded it, installed it, and sure enough, I had the full-blown Chinese version of it. All menus, everything were in Chinese. And there's no really way to change that because it's supposed to detect that based on the installed language packs on your system, which well, I have one. To be fair, there is one way. Yeah. You, you uninstalled it. Exactly, right. yeah. Right. And the, 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 the better part of the story is then when I uninstalled it, went back to the site, clicked the same button again. This time it came up in German. So the third time was the charm, though. So the third time I actually got the English version and all is well. And hopefully it looks like Microsoft has fixed the problem since then. Uh, yeah, it was, to be fair, it is funny, and it is great that Mike was persistent enough to try it three times, thinking if I try it enough, eventually it will change. That is the definition of insanity. Um, by the way, I uh, keep doing the same thing, hoping for a different outcome. But having said that, uh, it was all over social media. It was a big deal on Twitter and uh, in general on LinkedIn, et cetera. A lot of people posted screen captures yeah. saying, what the heck's going on with this? So it, it's good to see that it's been fixed. We were not sure what was going to happen. I was betting, Mike, before we got started, I'm like, you know, if it does come up in a foreign language, this is going to be hilarious. And we right. have to definitely make sure we tell people about this. But thankfully, it seems to have been fixed. All right, so we're going to download this. So I'm just going to go ahead, agree, and download. Thank you. Your download will begin shortly. We're just going to close that. Now, the download is already started right down here. Uh, and it is actually dunks. It's a small mm -hmm. setup file. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that. And Microsoft Edge update, yes. And we're just going to minimize the browser. And you can see <clears throat> we're going ahead and downloading and getting the, uh, the software. Obviously, need to be connected to the internet for this to happen. I didn't mention that, but just be aware of that. Otherwise, it's not going to go as smoothly as it is right now. Uh, it is installing Edge, so you know that should not take too long. It's a pretty quick install. I find it's a little bit longer than the install for Chrome, but not by much. So it is a little bit longer, but not by much, just to be aware of that. Also, uh, we're letting that go, probably in about another five to 15 seconds, just depending on what's going on. There you go, see it's almost done right now. Just put our icon up at the top there. Really cool, put one down for us as a shortcut on the taskbar as well. Uh, and does go in just a second, once it is setting everything up and kind of linking it and understanding what's happening, uh, it is going to open the browser for me. So that part is nice. There we go. Just about ready to get started. So we'll just click get started there. We can go through and look at the customization items if we choose to. That's up to us. It's really up to us whether we want to do that or not. We're just going to opt out of that just because we want to get into the browser. So let me just bring that up. Just gives us the, hey, welcome, you know, kind of take a tour kind of thing. So we can certainly do that if we want. But let's just go ahead and bring up a actual browsing window. Uh, you will notice, very similar to Edge, you do have the buttons that will allow you to have essentially shortcut tiles right at the top. Uh, they're populated based on things you may go to and or things that have been promoted, like Facebook. I've never gone to Facebook in my life, but yet it shows up there. <laughs> but I do use LinkedIn, so these are obviously put there by Microsoft, right? But we can get rid of one or more of these if we choose to, as you see, close out a bunch, and then I can, just like we can in Edge, use the actual plus sign there to add a website URL. So I could put, you know, itpro.tv in there, and then I can go, you know, to our itpro.tv website, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I could do that. That's pretty straightforward. And 
It does have some additional stuff we wouldn't see in Chrome, although if you are using Google Docs and the whole mm -hmm. productivity suite, you can get close to this kind of thing. But you'll see it's got my information for documents I may have interacted with on stuff. Now, this is from one of my test um, demo accounts that I'm using in my Office 365 and Azure uh, tenant that we use for shows, right? So this is not my actual IT Pro TV account, but it's just got stuff in there from my uh, IT Pro TV demo new dot on Microsoft.com tenant that we use on the shows for various things. But it's linked all that because the credential I'm logged on under IT Pro TV 4 is my user, is one of my active users, and it's pulled that profile in and synced all that content. So that part is kind of nice. I can go to SharePoint directly from here if I'm linked. I can go down and open up OneDrive from here if I'm linked. I can bring up document previews and see all that stuff. So that's all really nice. Uh, but I also have settings here for page content, I can modify that. If I don't want the Office 365 content that I'm showing you, I can go and just do the just traditional kind of view that you would see the mm -hmm. Microsoft News Feed kind of thing. I can also change the page layout, uh, inspirational, focused, or informational. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've played with any of these, but. Yeah, I like you know. those. Cause like, you know, with, with you on that informational, it is showing a lot of information on your it screen. And, and you might not want that. If you use your computer in an open office environment or on an airplane or something like that, where you have to worry about shoulder surfing, maybe you want to go with the more, uh, you know, less informational view. So it's not putting links to files or maybe not even showing your, your research. And you'll see, I just changed it while we were talking. So I, you know, just toggled it. Mm -hmm. You know, I did the inspirational, it's got the nice little background there, right? With the uh, water surfing mm -hmm. Chromium logo. <laughs> uh, but then you can see that it brings up essentially what you would see normally in Edge or even Chrome for that yeah. matter, which is just you know kind of the tile preview of news and whatever. So mm -hmm. that's really good because it is not quite in private, but it is kind of stealthy in the sense you're not yeah. exposing your information Absolutely. to your point. So we like that a lot. Now that's one set of settings. That's just the settings icon at the upper right. Uh, but also keep in mind, I have my traditional other area for settings, my ellipsis right here, where I can bring up the traditional pop out or fly out menu, right? With all my normal stuff, I do have my in private window capability, so I still have that. All the things we would come to expect downloads, extensions, print, share, etc. I also have settings, and I have you know, the ability to go in and see detailed settings in here. Uh, but you'll see I've got a lot more profile stuff mm -hmm. than I would with sync and all of that. Uh, whether right now I'm not syncing, I can set that up to sync, uh, but it does have that information. So kind of be on the lookout for that because you had some issues with syncing initially. As you were I did. Up. It was one of the things that I would definitely point out if you're, if you're switching to the, the new Edge Chromium, if you've been using beta or dev or just standard Edge before all of this, go ahead and, and if, even if you don't plan on doing it in the future, turn on syncing temporarily. Take that, because sure. that's going to just take your bookmarks and put them up out there in the cloud. So Because when you install this, it replaces the old Edge or Edge Dev or Edge Beta, and it's gone, and at first, I thought all my bookmarks were gone. And with what we do, we bookmark a lot of pages. Um, luckily, when I went in here and realized that sync was just not turned on by default, as soon as I turned that on and authenticated, all my bookmarks came back. But if I hadn't synced with the old browser first, I might have lost all of those bookmarks. So you might want to export them or turn on sync before you run through this install process. Yeah, that's going to be important. And Mike was crying in Chinese and then in German, <laughs> was. which was hilarious. Yeah. Let me tell you what, if you have not seen it, it was just, yeah. wow, it was cool. <laughs> all right, but it finally worked, so we're glad about all that. All kidding aside, but that is an important gotcha because yeah. it's not necessarily you're going to be installing this new having never used it. A lot of people may, but a lot of people may have been involved mm -hmm. in the beta. And yeah. if they were using the beta browser, this transition time as you're moving away from that, when mm -hmm. you do the install, is going to pull all that stuff in and then it's going to disappear. Yeah. To Mike's point, that's really important. You don't want to lose all those bookmarks exactly. and all that information, because that yeah. can really ruin your day. Like, yeah. all kidding aside, we're being serious about that part. So I just wanted to touch on that. All right, so that's our quick look at kind of installing the Chromium browser, right? All right, Adam. Well, as we do at the end of every cool features in Windows 10, we take a, a moment for us to rate the new feature, let you know what we think of it. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a thumbs up. I am really impressed with what Microsoft has done. We've come a long way from the days of IE uh, and just the fact that it's Chromium based. Everybody's playing together. It's fast. It's responsive. Uh, I definitely go with a thumbs up on this one. I'm going to do the same. I like this one a lot. As I said, I've been using it as well for a while. Uh, and you know, I can see ultimately this becoming my standard browser once I figure out. Again, I'm not clear, so don't take my word either way. I'm not clear 
on the impact of doing this if you're on the Windows uh, Insider program, especially on the fast ring, uh, because I don't believe there will be an impact, but I haven't tested it enough to be sure. So I'm holding off installing it into a production machine. But if you're in stable environments where you're not flexing that OS every week and you're in a stable build, even if you're imaging every few months or something, there should be no issues. And I can tell you for a fact, it works just fine there. So I would definitely be comfortable giving it a thumbs up. I just may not be able to deploy it right away in my production machine. All right, well, there you go. Go out and grab that latest version of Microsoft Edge that is now Chromium-based and released to a general availability. So, Adam, we appreciate that. Hope everybody enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for more new cool features coming your way. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.